I'm Terence Komal. We're currently in the midst of the second wave of the COVID crisis and pandemic around the world, with particular countries being fingered and pointed out as being the starting points or the countries with the most cases that are sharing the new strain. In the United Kingdom, there's the N501Y strain, which is now being spread and has become, as some say, more transmittable. In South Africa, and now transmitting uh, elsewhere, we have the N501.V2 strain of the COVID-19 or coronavirus, as it's commonly called, that is spreading across the country. And as other countries have, have made accusations, the strain comes from South Africa. I had an interview last week with some major media, with a major media group, and shared my thoughts on this based on the latest data and information that we have available. There is talk across the country, there's talk across the world, that these new strains are new, are more transmittable, that means they're more easily shared. They're also more aggressive in terms of the infectiousness and the seriousness of complications, and that the new strain impacts youth more aggressively. I question some of these because for the following reasons. According to the data that we have, viruses mutate anyway. It's a natural cause of how viruses function. You get errors in copying, you get errors in the replication process within the body and through the process of, of the virus mutating itself. You have that with HIV, you have that with a range of other viruses. And it is part of the biological process of how viruses replicate. But is the mutation known to be more transmittable? There's no proven evidence that it's more transmittable at this point based on the data that I've seen out of the, the United Kingdom, the US and other leading journals, which speak of the strain, but there's no evidence of its increased transmittability. There is also questions of it causes more significant disease. Again, there's also not enough data to make that conclusion. It is worrying, yes, that there is a mutation, but there are too many unknowns at this stage. Now, some people may question, but then what is the impact of mutation? In my view, it's like influenza in how it mutates every year. You take a vaccine every year based on what is known of the latest strain of the influenza virus or the flu vaccine or flu shot so that your body builds its immune response to that strain when you potentially get the flu annually. So it's nothing new to us. But then we talk about spread in particular in South Africa and elsewhere in the world. They're saying during the season post-November, people and young people particularly are getting more infected. Let's look at some of the facts. Exams finish late November and December. In South Africa and the Southern Hemisphere, it's summer. People are on holiday. They partying more. They socializing more. They drinking more. They on the beaches. They in various venues that they wouldn't normally find themselves during school terms or college uh, or campus timetables if, you, if you're at university. So to say that youth are being infected because of the strain is less of a concern to me as opposed to irresponsible behavior. People are socializing, they're relaxing, they're spending time with friends and family. And everybody seems to, or a large amount of people seem to be making the presumption that my family's also been at home, so the chance of them being infected is low. But you don't know where that family member has been in the last couple of weeks. You don't know where they've been shopping, who they've been socializing with, who they've been spending time with, where their domestic help has been, where their partner has been, where their colleagues at work have been, and who has been sharing what with whom. And that is how I believe, because of the increased social times through, through these festive periods and holiday periods, there is a more aggressive spread of the virus. I think it's just irresponsible behavior. It's got, in my mind, based on the data that we have, I don't think the strain is much of a concern as opposed to people's poor behavior and decision making. Just yesterday, a, there was a post that came out by Dr. Tedros from the World Health Organization that was very pertinent in which he said, every decision you make needs to be a life and death decision. And I agree 100%. Whether you meet someone, whether you socialize with them, whether you go shopping, where you're gonna hang out and where you spend the festive period, where you spent your Christmas, where you're going to spend your new year, which events you're going to attend, which venues you're going to be at, and who you're going to be with, are critical decisions because it will decide life and death. To tell you to drive this point home, just yesterday I made between five and six 
referrals to hospitals because people that know me could not get admission to facilities in their area. This was in KZN and Gauteng. They could not get admission to the facilities nearby. And after a couple of phone calls and discussions with colleagues, we found hospitals that are willing to take referrals and take patients in with potentially positive uh, COVID positive patients. And it is extremely worrying that in a festive period, these are the conversations we're having. I got onto Facebook this morning for a quick catch up to see what people are up to. And it was depressing because 70 to 80% of the notifications are either somebody is infected and we need to pray for them. And that's part of the post from people or it's funeral notices across the country. And it is extremely distressing that at a time that we should all be limiting contact, time that we should be with our families and celebrating life because the COVID crisis has exposed the realities of life, the realities of expectations, perceptions, and what's truly valuable to us, we're now looking at people losing their lives on a daily basis. It is time that you and I focus on what's important. We need to realize that whether it's the mutation, and I may change my view if the data changes or becomes more available in, in, in days to come, but I think it's less relevant about the second strain, but more about the second wave based purely on irresponsible behavior. So I appeal to you, be considerate in your decisions, be considerate of your family, your friends, and generally those that you love, because the second wave is serious. It is more aggressive because of people's poor behavior. But we need to realize that the fact that there is a vaccine doesn't mean that you're going to get it or people around you are going to get it anytime soon. Speculation is in South Africa for the general public. It could take many months, if not almost a year, for it to reach the general public because of limited availability, because of increased demands and a lot of unknowns of let's assume you get the vaccine. Will it be that, like the flu vaccine? Do you need to get one seasonally? Do you need to get one annually? Or is it going to be like vaccines that you take once off and you build an immunity? At this stage, there are too many unknowns. We're celebrating that we know that we have a vaccine. We're celebrating that there are multiple suppliers. But the fact that we need billions of people to be vaccinated, and some are talking about second and third shots, it may take a long time for you to get access to those vaccines. So please, be responsible, be considerate. Be considerate not just of your families too, but for a spare moment, spare a thought, because just two weeks ago, I admitted my own grandmother, COVID positive, to a hospital in, in, in Durban, in KZN. And the healthcare workers, a single doctor, was assessing more than 40 patients a day, and at least half of those were coming in COVID positive across the age ranges, across the race demographics and other factors that, may, that, that one may think may influence it. This was a generalized pattern. Whilst I was in the casualty in that hospital for a couple of hours, four patients came in positive, two low symptoms, two extremely serious, one needed ventilation. And that was just in a morning of two to three hours. It is significantly serious. So spare a thought for the healthcare workers and the healthcare system and those of us who are contributing in the health system who are extremely strained and overburdened at this point and burnt out long ago, but going on because you need it, we need it, and they can provide only so much. The system is overburdened, but spare a thought for those who during your times of celebration and you think it's safe to let your guard down and not have your masks and social distance, those are the people that will care for people like you and me if people continue to make irresponsible decisions and let their guard down at a time when we should be at a heightened level of responsibility and awareness of the impact of COVID. Just over breakfast this morning with our family, we were talking about we don't know a single family in our broader social circle that hasn't been impacted or affected by COVID. As I said, my own grandmother was directly affected. Thank God she's improved and she's out of ICU now, which is nothing short of a miracle due to her, her, her immunity and the aggressive treatment by my colleagues. But not everyone's been that lucky. So please consider everyone affected and affecting treatments during this COVID period. But most importantly, love yourself, love your families and your communities and be responsible. Stay well and stay safe and all the best for a blessed new year.